In Chicago, the Bears are building. Upgrading, redesigning, strengthening for the future. It's a bold undertaking, painstaking work, a blueprint for victory with attention to the smallest detail down to the very last rivet. The master plan and the foundation are in place. A shining testament to hard work is at hand. I think we're making very good progress, and I think it's just the feeling on the team that if some problem develops, the players and the coaches will address it, we'll get it right, and we'll go on. We won't make that mistake again. And that's a feeling uh, that we all have, that we're continually trying to improve and that we're seeing the results of those efforts. We're getting to be a better and better football team. In 1993, Chicago won two more games than the season before. They were younger, leaner, and meaner. Fighters to the finish. that tested the very fabric of the team, the Bears found a common thread. They reaffirmed the cherished bond between a team and a city. They discovered a young commander who believes in his soldier. Effort, team effort. I think we've done a great job of uh, uh, mixing the young with the old. And, and learning the new system, the new coaches, the new practice times, and uh, there's a very, very good unselfish attitude amongst this group. The Chicago Bears are building, and the 93 season was a solid cornerstone, a season to build on. Building a champion is never easy. The Bears lost their opener with a minute to play, then dropped a three-point heartbreaker a week later. Dave Wanstead's confidence was unshaken. This may sound crazy, but I actually felt better about our team after the bye week, which followed the 0-2 start, than what I did at the beginning of the season, because then we had gone through some turmoil from the standpoint of not winning, and uh, that was going to happen at some point in the season, obviously. And uh, you, you just never know how the guys are going to respond in that situation. And uh, I was very happy the way they, they bounced back and, and wanted to make the improvement and, and to work to do it. We knew we were going to be better. Our coaches were behind us, and Dave was the main one, where he didn't change anything. He worked with the players, and we just kept positive because we knew it was just a matter of time before we could come and get the hard work. Dave preached before we played Tampa Bay that it's time for us to get our turnovers. We've been working too hard not to get them. The Bears forced seven turnovers and took charge from the opening whistle to the final gun. They discovered a killer instinct, and this time victory would not slip through their fingers. In his first season as starting middle linebacker, Dante Jones led the charge with two interceptions. The route was on as the Bears exploded for a season-high 47 points, earning them their first win of the season. Hard ball, Harbaugh, pop flies the middle, what next? Harbaugh steps and throws the left side of the end zone. Wow, leaping run! Touchdown! 
Dave Wanstead's first victory as head coach was hammered home by Ron Cox, who turned in the hit of the year. After ringing up nearly 50, points were hard to come by the following week against Atlanta. 52-yard field goal attempt out of the hole of Gardaki. Placement made, clean snap, clean place, kick rises to the upright end. It is good. The Bears managed only a pair of Kevin Butler field goals. One touchdown could win it for the Falcons. Sets up right side, looking around, steps up again. It is he pop flies it over the middle. That touchdown never came as Chicago played a near-perfect defensive game. Interceptions by Donnell Wolford and John Mangum had the Bears pitching a shutout. It came down to one final play. Football to the 13. This is ball game. Three receivers to the left. One receiver to the right. Tolliver ducks in under center. He takes it. He's back to throw. Under pressure over the middle. He goes. He's got his man. And he's got down short of the first down. They had dominated in a blowout, then won by a whisker. Now they had to prove they could win on the road. Hey, programs here. It would not be a PG-rated frolic, as even the youngest of Bear fans wore hard hats. The Eagles had won 11 straight at the vet, but the Bears were primed, especially one of their toughest warriors, Richard Dent. Calvin Williams in motion to the left side from the eye. Back to throw. Brister swings it up. Yeah. Intercepted by Dent at the 50. 45 for Brister hit Richard Dent right in the hand. Dent's path of destruction included an interception, 10 tackles, and two and a half sacks. The game had brought out the best in a veteran star, but it was also a stage for an electrifying newcomer, rookie Curtis Conway. Our ball retreats in the pocket. He's the right side. Conway is out there. Yeah. Oh, in the end zone. Oh, I mean, he was on his back when he came down with it in the end zone on the right side. In an old fashioned bare knuckle back alley brawl, the Bears hit with combinations and haymakers, and they alone were left standing. Chicago won its third straight. They had proven their resiliency. They had found themselves. They had found something to build on. The essence of pro football is revealed in a catch between father and son. It's dreams of a tight spiral and a leaping game-winning grab. It's Norman Rockwell. It's an NFL record 1,012 games played by the Chicago Bears. For decades, they've come, like pilgrims, from the farthest reaches of the land of Lincoln. Fathers and sons like their fathers and sons before them, just to root on their beloved Bears and be a part of game day. At Soldier Field, Heroes never really say farewell. They remain as sentries in the shadows, caretakers of the future, men who played the game the way it was meant to be, legendary Hall of Famers like Dick Butkus and a man with a sweeter disposition. A legacy begun by George Hallis back in 1920 has been passed down to Dave Wanstead. The Bears couldn't be in better hands. He has a, this wonderful combination of caring very much about winning and 
and inspiring that and calling out that same feeling in the players. But at the same time, he never lets, lets go of being a very good teacher and motivator. I think the players have the sense that he's on their side, and so it, it's high demands on himself and everybody around him, but with a sense of support and encouragement so that everybody is led to do the absolute best they can do on the playing field. At 41, Dave Wanstead is the youngest head coach in the NFC. He has championship rings from Pitt and Miami and a Super Bowl ring with the Dallas Cowboys. He's a proven winner, a motivator, and now he has a team of his own. He's uh, a good boss. I mean, he's a guy you enjoy playing for, a guy who's out there every day in practice looking as if he gets as good a workout as you do. Uh, very energetic, very positive, um, and very involved with every aspect of the game. I think a big thing he's expressed is team. We thrive on one another. He has to believe in it because he preaches it. Times are hard, times are good. It's been the same thing, and that's a big, big key to why he's, we've grown to really like Dave so much because he hasn't changed what he's been preaching since he came in the first day. One, two, three, two, let's go! Some things have never changed. To be a winner, you need a clutch kicker like Chicago's all-time scoring leader, Kevin Butler, who banged home 102 points. You need the lethal left foot of Chris Gardaki, whose booming punts went a long way in making the Bears the league's number one punt coverage unit. Robert Green, Albert Fontenot, and Maurice Douglas reached the point of no return, while number 91 rookie Myron Baker helped make Chicago's special teams very special indeed. John Landetta with the wind to his back. by the special teams must be matched by the offense to contend in a division that featured three playoff teams. Lineman Troy Ozine, Mark Bortz, John Wojciechowski, Jerry Fontenot, Keith Van Horn, and Jay Lewenberg paved the way for the running game. Throughout history, no team has boasted more thoroughbred backs than the Bears. Last season, Neil Anderson, Robert Green, Craig Hayward, and Bob Christian shared the load until a featured runner emerged. By season's end, Tim Worley became the weapon of choice. Worley started the final three games and gained nearly 450 yards during the Bears' playoff push. Harbaugh looks it over, he takes and a handoff to Worley, leaps yeah. the middle of the line, touchdown! Tight ends Keith Jennings and number 84 Chris Gedney moved the chains while Jim Harbaugh and P.T. Willis found Tom Waddle, who led the team in catches and receiving yards. In a game where speed is the focus like never before, number one pick Curtis Conway provides just that. He's the game breaker of the future, and along with free agent Terry Obey, Chicago featured a pair of home run hitters who thrived on taking it deep. And Harbaugh, he takes and he sets up short. He pop flies the left side for yeah. Terry Obey. Touchdown! Offensively, there were flashes of brilliance, but upgrading the attack will be job one. Purpose is like a heart. You don't create a heart, but like the Tin Man and the Wizard of Oz, you can discover the one you've always had. After three losses, the Bears found that purpose. They faced three straight road games in 12 days. No team in NFL history had ever won all three in such a short period away from home. The trial began in San Diego, where Chicago had never won. But after falling behind by 10, they roared back to win. Long count, Harbaugh takes off play action, looks to throw, steps up, throws a deep ah, step on the left side. Yeah. Yeah. Curtis Conway! Curtis Conway! Oh, 
A week later in Arrowhead against the chief team that would ultimately blaze a path to the conference championship, the Bears trailed once more, then clawed their way back from 14 down. Tim Worley broke free from 25 yards out, and the resurgent Bears were within two. First and 10 from the Kansas City 25. Chiefs are offside, violated the neutral zone. Yes. 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 win in the end the team with the most heart keep cash tight in and motion to the right break back to throw Craig looking around now side arms it over the middle got his man got it Jeremy Lincoln inside the five down he goes Jeremy Lincoln stepped forward and Neil Anderson's 50th career touchdown sealed yet another hard fought win far from Soldier Field third and goal to go yard and a half away here's the Jim Anderson to the right side touchdown yeah. The final stop on the journey, the Silver Dome on Thanksgiving. By now, the Bears had become road warriors. They were on the verge of making history, and nothing, no matter how unexpected, could stop them. the 30 yard line bounding across the 30 and will roll to a stop in Chicago territory that might have been one of the smartest plays I've ever seen a punter no. make in my life took it in on he's gonna take the safety and instead he whipped around and kicked it that was a great play by Gardaki a ferocious defense forced three fumbles two interceptions and sacked Rodney Pete five times This time, the Bears led from start to finish, and any hopes the Lions had of winning were dashed by a spectacular touchdown catch by Terry Obey. Jim Harbaugh takes the snap from Bond, no back to throw. Harbaugh steps up, rainbows, down the middle, over the outside. Yeah! Touchdown! <laughs> the Bears had done what they set out to do. Three straight wins put them back in the division race, and much credit went to a defense that loved to take a bite out of the opposition. We've come together as a defensive unit, obviously, quicker than, than any other phase, and uh, I think there's talent there. Uh, the players have an unselfish attitude, and whenever you have those things going for you, you're gonna play solid. They don't read and react. The Bears attack. Whether it was free agent hitman Joe Kane, all-time games played leader Steve McMichael, or sack king Richard Dent, the aim was the same. Hit, then hit some more. We're trying to be a more aggressive defense and get everybody involved in the play. We got a certain thing where we stay swarmed to the ball, which is get all 11 people to the ball and make the tackle. And I think that's what's going to separate us from a lot of people. Trace Armstrong totaled 11 and a half sacks and never gave up on a play in his finest season ever. Tim Ryan, Carl Simpson, and number 90 Alonzo Spellman were big reasons why the Bears surrendered the third fewest points in the entire NFL. Reckless tackle Chris Zorich finished third on the team in tackles and sacks. Dave Wanstead's aggressive system unleashed former Cowboy Vinson Smith and was perfectly suited for 10-year veteran Sean Gale, number 23. Anthony Blaylock, number 47, was a perfect fit on the corner, while Mark Carrier tied for the team lead with four interceptions. Game in and game out, Donnell Wolford was asked to cover the enemy's best receiver. All he did was hit and cover his way to his first Pro Bowl. After only a year of molding, the defense finished fourth in the NFL, and they're going to be even better. How good? Just ask division rival Green Bay, their fourth straight victim. Hey, welcome to Soldier Field. It's a beautiful day, and we're going to take care of the Packers today. And did they ever. Second and 12 from the 22, far back to the middle, pops it yeah. off the right side, intercepted. Dante Jones to the 15. 
First time in 53 years, the Bear defense scored three touchdowns in a single game. Set on the 93 season when the Bears were eliminated from the playoff race with one week to play. Confidently, they await the dawn of the coming year. This is a revitalized team and it's showing new energy and purpose. We're working hard, we're working together, and we expect in time that that's going to help us get to our, our main goal, which is to get to the Super Bowl and to win it. To achieve that goal, Chicago brought in Andy Heck, number 66 from Seattle, a sturdy five-year veteran offensive lineman to help blast open holes for former Steeler Merrill Hodge, a hard-nosed back who's an excellent receiver out of the backfield. To breathe new life into the passing game, 29-year-old quarterback Eric Kramer was acquired. A former Lion who's familiar with life in the NFC Central Kramer is poised and precise and will be a counted on performer. Each season is a road of discovery full of defining moments. For the Bears, it was a year in which a new coach, battle tested veterans, and 24 new players made great strides. And now their sights are set on the season ahead. You know, we're going to be a force to contend with, I think, in the very near future. And I think that everyone on this team has a very positive feeling in the direction we're going. And we just feel so strongly about what we're doing as a group, not as a player, as a person. But you talk to any one of us, and everybody feels very strong that we're going to just keep And the funny part is we're still going to get better. The Bears are a team with a proud past and a promising future. They're building on 74 years of experience. And while the work never really ends, there's a quiet confidence. To a man, they have pledged themselves to a commitment to winning. For the coming season and the seasons yet to come, they have found something to build on. <laughs>